<clears throat> okay, so today is a very special day because today is when I finally get to make my high spin Oromus. I just want to jump right in. Ingredient number uno. This is nothing more than two quite large binfuls of wood, chopped wood, along with 24 coconut shells. Okay, these are young coconut shells, and as you can see, it's only made this much. I heated this within a high temperature environment, and I actually put the ash inside of the coconut shells and then burnt it down some more. Okay, now just to give you guys some perspective on the amount of wood I'm dealing with, I'm going to show you guys the basket. This is the basket here, it's relatively big, and this was filled up two times over with wood. I literally mean heaping over to the point where you can't even see that plug socket, okay? And this took me a month to make. That is copper. And I know on this display, on this camera, it looks kind of orangey, you know? But with my eyes, that actually looks brown. Okay, I say that because I had to use electrolysis to make this. And using electrolysis to make something like that means that you're using electricity to literally tear apart copper molecules. And when you do this, it gives off a nice baby blue color. And once that baby blue you know, molecule has become burnt, so to speak, with an overflow of electricity, it darkens the color to resemble more of what you're seeing here. Okay. That took me around about three weeks, maybe a little bit more actually. And as you can see, I've left some water that needs to be removed before I mix these ingredients together. Now, the last ingredient that I'm mixing here is bamboo charcoal. This was kind of difficult to get hold of in the UK. We tend to have more coconut charcoal. But this bamboo charcoal here will be used because of its high density, mineral rich, well, content. It's got a lot of minerals in there. If you think about a bamboo shoot, those of you who know this already won't be surprised, but the bulb itself, you actually have to water that for up to five years before it even shoots. So for up to five years, it's gaining minerals. It's gaining life, substance, and then it just explodes out of the ground. And that is why bamboo grows up to an inch per day. It's because of how mineral rich it is. And those of you who have done some research on forest fires, you would have already known that, well, after a forest fire, everything else that grows out of those ashes become way more bountiful in produce. And that is because all of the minerals have been shifted into a different state, a much more easily high absorbable state to the surrounding inhabitants there. Not just the animals, but also to the fresh seeds that need the minerals, that need to absorb the minerals out of the ash which has turned into soil. I actually ended up, during my alchemical process, my metallurgy process, discovering how to create rocks, which is very surprising. I did it completely by accident, by smashing together literal minerals in their organic raw uh, states. I just broke them down with acid processes, and then I put them into a high temperature environment, and I ended up creating sulfur along with another group of materials, which showed up as a rock, which is pretty cool to take something that's so separate, you know, like metal, and then to make it into something that we see every day and take for, for granted. You know, a lot goes into making the earth. So these three I'm now going to put through what's known as the degradation process. And that is when you add sodium hydroxide to a beaker of your choice. I'm gonna choose this one. And you add it alongside with the other minerals that you want to break down. This will help further shake apart the bonds between the minerals. And then once that's all said and done, I'm going to put it into a crucible, a quartz crucible, and then put it into my fireplace, okay? And what that's going to do is that the heat is going to cause the sodium to further shake apart the bonds between these mineral substrates. But before I end up mixing these ingredients together, it'd be a good idea to get rid of this remaining fluid. So I'm going to use a turkey baster, a glass turkey baster. OK, 
Okay, so that's as much water as I can take away. Now what I've got to do is mix the other two ingredients. Okay now, if I add the sodium hydroxide to this mix when it's too thick, then what can happen is, is that the sodium hydroxide will make what I'm mixing here solidify, which can become quite problematic in the long run when it comes to getting it out of the beaker. So what I'm going to do is, well, luckily, now that I'm kind of wise with all this stuff, I'm not quite sure what you'd call it chemistry wise <laughs> I, I know exactly what kind of consistency to have it at so that the sodium hydroxide doesn't make it kind of freeze up on me I added seven of each of the material to the pot okay so the degradation process is almost complete the beaker is cooling down now and I had actually broken one of my tools in order to mix the mixture I'm just gonna let that sit and now what I've actually got to do besides from going out and buying some more firewood I have to use my blowtorch to line the inside of this crucible with a borax but for now I have to go and prepare for the burn so I'll be back in a minute I'm just gonna run to the shop, get some firewood, and get ready. Peace. <laughs> 